When America entered World War II in December of 1941, they were a bit behind on their tank design. Their most, well, their most improved model was the M3 Lee, which to the British became the Grand. But the team got together and designed one of the most famous, versatile and reliable tanks of all time. And that just happened to be the M4. Now, the M4 Sherman didn't get the name Sherman from the designers. It was the name that the British gave to it. And they just happened to adopt it. And M4 itself stands for Medium 4. So, Medium Tank 4. So, the original M4 had a welded hull, a 75mm and hurled 5 crew. One commander, one gunner, one loader, one bow gunner and one driver. And later versions of the Sherman improved the hull, the suspension and the gun. For example, the M4, the original M4, had a welded hull and VBSS suspension, which is... I can't remember, I'll probably put it at the bottom of the screen somewhere. But then, by the M4A1, it had a cast iron hull, which helped against protection, but still had the VBSS suspension. Now, there were loads of different models with loads of different improvements. The gun improvements went from a 75mm to a 105mm high explosive howitzer to a 76 and 76.2mm gun. Its co-armament was a 30 cal M1919A2 Browning machine gun in the bow, another Browning 30 cal M1919A2 machine gun in the coaxial, and on top, sometimes, you would have a Browning 50 cal M2B machine gun. But as the war went on, many versions were adopted. One example is the M4A1. It had a cast iron hull, but it was still easy to shoot. Hence why you see on many Shermans, you see plates on the side and on the side of the turret. These were added by the crew for extra protection as well as all the makeshift armour you can find on tanks. It was to give it that bit of protection. Now, let's get forward a few years. you got the M4A1, the M4A2, the M4A3. And that's where the real show starts. Because you get the M4A3 E8, Easy 8 Sherman, which can be seen in the film Fury. So, the Easy 8 had a 76 high velocity gun. This was enough to pierce the sides and rear of the Tiger 1, which is what they needed. And obviously it had a welded hull, but it was better than the M4. Now, the M4A2 A3 E2, nicknamed the Jumbo, because it had an extra 1mm of armour on the front, was given this name. Well, because of its armour, and because it could take out Tigers ridiculously easily. Tigers, Panthers, Panzer Fours, you name it, it would take it out. Now, the Americans produced 50,000 of these tanks, that's excluding prototypes. So, they lended some to the Free French, the British, and the Soviets. The British actually adopted the... Um, M4 into their armory, but one great man came along and said, what if we can replace the 75 in this with a 17 pounder? Now normally turrets are made to accommodate crew, accommodate like armour, but this time it had to be specifically made to hold the 17 pounder, and therefore it became known as the Firefly, because when a shell exited the barrel it would make such a flash so, they just gave it Firefly. And the Soviets, they, they made their own modifications to their Shermans. They put a multi-rocket launch system on top of it. It looks ridiculous, but Soviet Union. Now, pretty much all the con every, at least one country in every continent has used this vehicle. 
whether it be the Nazis from capturing it, whether it be the Saudi Arabians, who actually adopted it to the Sherman 50 and Sherman 51. I cover that in my series on tanks. And what's the funny thing is, America produced it from 40, 1940 to 1957. So it was used in Korea. But then other countries started borrowing, stealing, buying and making Shermans from 1957 all the way up to present day. Now, there was one drawback with this tank. Not only did it go up like a firework, it was expensive. Back then it cost 45 to 65 thousand US dollars. And today that's about 650 to 800 thousand US dollars. Other than that, tank's perfect. So, let me know what you guys think of the Sherman in the comments below. Do you think it is a good tank? Or do you think it's just another tank? Now, I'm sort of going to make this series end quite abrupt because I've got more technology to do and not enough weapons so on Thursday you're going to be seeing a different type of weapon video but it's still going to be about weapons. I've estimated that it will be another eight weeks of this series. I just thought I'd let you know because if I don't say it now then I'm never going to say it. But all in all, the series has been pretty good. So, subscribe to Beast History today for more history videos. If you do enjoy, leave a like and share it around with your friends. I'm pretty sure there are some GCSE students out there looking for a reason to watch this. And I will see you on Sunday for one of the biggest battle... Wait, hold... Oh, fuck.